previous video I talked a little bit about soil types. And now I want to go into the egregores. Egregore is the Greek word for choir, as you may know. And while the soil type is very much focused on yeah, what is important, what is its reality, what is it that you want to achieve, what motivates you, the egregore is a lot more about the how of it. So the four soul types are the, the types who want to yeah, obey or orient themselves towards a higher power, the divine, uh, the type which wants to be social, which is focused on the beings around them, the egocentrical type, which is focused on themselves, and the controlling type, which is focused on things which are smaller than them, which they can manipulate. When you're talking about egregores, it is also about what it would be an ideal situation for you. And this is of course very different for every, every soul type. Um, for a person who has this divine focus, they would like to surround themselves, of course. They would like to live in a church or in a temple and be surrounded by um, spiritual people, saintly people, spiritual masters, um, spiritual art. Um, for people of the second type, they would like to have a life um, surrounded by other people, by animals, trees, stones, everything they can talk with, exchange with, uh, how they can help each other. Um, it's a very socialistic and social environment they crave. Um, for a person who has a focus on themselves, they tend to want to have a lot of tools to um, manifest and to enhance their own power. So they want courses, they want books, they want documentaries, they want trainings, they want practices. Um, they want goals, they want targets to achieve, to challenge themselves, to become better. They enjoy a competitive surrounding. And the people who are the controlling type uh, they like a very hierarchical structure. They like to have clear orders, clear guidelines. What is the goal? What are we going to do? What is the purpose? And then they can work on trying to manifest that, on trying to get these things uh, done. So the type of reality and the type of yeah, world order all these groups of souls are trying to achieve it's very different from each other. But actually, each of these um, soul groups who are looking for a very different world order, they tend to have different choirs who want to achieve this world order in a different way, in a different manner. Uh, so you have the very magical groups who believe that it is very much about um, uh, manipulation, using their willpower to achieve um, change. So they tend to see the world around them, experience the world around them as like a block of clay which can be manipulated, which can be kneaded into a different form and it is about the world around them but also about how they experience themselves. Um, they also see themselves as being responsive to their own willpower, to their own uh, self-discipline. And this is a method of um, how to uh, create this transformation. Uh, there's a second group and those follow a more mystical path. And the mystics believe more in not so much forcing things through the will but being guided into doing it in the best way possible. So they tend to try to listen to their hearts, to listen to their intuition, um, to pray, um, to receive inspiration from, uh, from other people around them or from higher sources. And through this um, inspiration they are yeah, in a way told what to do, when to do, how to act. So it is not so much about using your power but rather using your sensitivity so you don't need as much power. You will still need some power but it's not where the focus lies. Uh, the third group, 
are the people who are more hermetical in uh, nature. So they tend to not so much trust their feelings, but rather trust their minds. So they tend to work with models, uh, uh, predictions, do studies, scientific studies, uh, do analysis, and in this way decide what is the likely or probable effect of an action and try to, in a way, have a very good set of different options which they can compare to each other and thereby then um, yeah, start working with which are the most promising paths and then to test them to see if they are indeed yeah, having the best results, if not adapt the model or the variables within the model so you will be able to achieve the results you desire. So a much more, you could say, scientific mind, a more scientific way of working with things, rather than uh, trusting your feelings and hoping that indeed your feelings will guide you to the optimal action. It is more about calculating your chances and finding a different method to uh, reach such an optimal goal. And then there is, of course, um, agricultures who believe in combining uh, two or sometimes even all three of these methods to achieve their goals. And although if every soul type has their own set of egregores, there are also egregores who are actually working with uh, two and sometimes even three different soul types. So it is possible to have some cooperation going on across boundaries because often at least two types can agree that something might be good or something might be better in a certain way than it is now. So even though these yeah, soul types and therefore also the egregores which belong to them have their own perfect ideal, um, they can cooperate against other groups because at least they can agree on some things while they may, may disagree on others. So these can be um, yeah, little vague borders or boundaries between these different egregores. It's also important to note that not everybody belongs to an egregore and also not every inherited connection to an egregore is activated. So. Um, and if it is inactivated, it actually has little to no effect on the person. So this is an inherited, uh, or possibly inherited, um, capacity, that is membership of the egregore, but that needs to be renewed in every lifetime. So in every lifetime you need to devote yourself to that ideal, to be willing to cooperate within that egregore's structure, and you need to have enough um, yeah, um, skill, loyalty to be accepted again by that egregore to, so that they will want to work together with you again. Such a yeah, reinitiation or reconnection can happen spontaneously by basically doing certain things and the egregore may see them as signs that you're ready or that you're indeed committed to the same things, but it can also be done in a more formal manner through an initiation. And this can be both a self-initiation or you can be initiated by a member of that egregore who will yeah, allow you to have access. Uh, most egregores tend to be a little bit hierarchical in nature because very much on the top you tend to have uh, spiritual masters, uh, angels, gods, and more towards the bottom you tend to have us and even below us you tend to have even smaller uh, spirits. And everybody within this egregore, no matter high or low, they're actually all inspired by the same goal, trying to follow the same method. This is why it is called a choir, in which you also have low voices, high voices, different numbers of the singers in every yeah, tone group. But still you try to work together so that together you can create one harmonious, strong impulse to change reality, both within yourself and outside of yourself. And it also tends to be that this 
um, connections to egregores can also create some tension in a person because you can become a member of egregores which are not friendly to each other, which are actually opposed to each other. And then as soon as you do something for one egregore, the other egregore is not going to like it or the other way around. This can lead to a lot of internal conflict. And it can even be necessary to de-initiate yourself, to get rid of some of these egregorial influences, so that you can focus your life on one goal or one purpose. But not everybody is ready in a way to live a life of service. And most people are just yeah, interested in doing their own thing, following their own impulses. And it's only when people yeah, reach a level where they feel that their own impulses are not enough or they've grown beyond the individual into a more um, collective form of awareness, that they feel that indeed working on um, society itself is more interesting or more valuable than working on just themselves. So it takes a certain level of advancement to get into this uh, relationship with the agrocores and start working with them more consciously. Subconsciously, though, we are all very much impacted by the actions of agrocores because, as I said, the agrocores are very much interested in shaping our reality, in shaping our world. So every book you read is inspired by an egregore. Every news or you see or every movie you watch is also inspired by an egregore. All artists are and scientists are in a way funnels through which these egregorial influences enter into our world. And the same for our leadership. Uh, anybody with power and, but with influence is of interest to egregores and they can be a knowing member of an egregore or they can become a tool of an egregore. Because ultimately egregores want to create a condition which is optimal for their uh, spirit type and also for the spirit type who chooses their method of evolution, being it magical, mystical, hermetic or a combination of them. So you will find that um, often if you do meet a person of a similar egregore um, you may have a very different um, role to play because you have different talents but there will be almost an instantaneous click or a trust or um, a willingness to help each other, to support each other because you feel that yeah, you can do things yourself or you can give certain power to the other and ultimately it will have the same or sometimes an even better effect than if you do it yourself. And this unity in, in purpose uh, tends to create a very strong bond between people of the same egregore. And often this can also lead to uh, uh, friendships, uh, partnerships, uh, relationships, um, because they cooperate in an almost natural fashion because they have a similar view on things, a similar analysis of what is going on in the, in the world around them. And they tend to see the same solutions and same methods to achieve these solutions. But the opposite is also true, because as I said, some agricores are very much opposed to each other or in conflict with each other, even open warfare sometimes. So it can also be that by being a member of an anger core, you will find yourself being viciously attacked by, thing, by people out of nowhere for no other reason than that they belong to an opposite anger core. So they will feel an almost um, yeah, immediate dislike towards you or hate against you or need to take your power to block you in whatever you say, whatever you do. Um, and especially for people who are being used by these egregores, um, so people who are unknowingly inspired by these egregores, they can act in a very strong, very vicious manner um, because there is nothing holding them back. Um, and there's kind of a, like a blind rage uh, they feel towards members of other egregores. And sometimes they try to rationalize it but often there is no reason for it if you look at the 
purely physical circumstances. So a lot of deep conflicts people have uh, with each other or even with certain elements within society uh, can be based on these equatorial yeah, struggles. Um, because as I said, especially uh, positions of power, so police, army, um, government, um, big companies, they tend to be of big interest to agricores. Um, the same is true for big political movements um, and ideological movements. They really uh, become tools of one or several agricores. Same also for religions. And depending on which agricore is at that time controlling that specific branch of the government or that country or that religion, uh, will lead to them using that yeah, stick, uh, which they can use to shape the world, but also as a stick to beat their opposition with. So it is in a way quite natural that different parts of the government or different powers have power struggles because they're actually belonging to different agricores, they're different tools from different combatants which they're using as sticks to beat each other with. So understanding the agricores involved in both yourself and whatever you feel is helping you or fighting you in the world around you, that can lead you to an awareness also like, gosh, these types of agricores and these types of power institutions are my friends. Maybe you have a very good relationship with police or with the tax office or with um, a certain religion like Judaistic people. And yeah, it can be that because there is actually a unity in agricore, even though yourself don't work for the tax office or the police or... Uh, you are not Jewish yourself, it can still be that there is this natural cooperation based on egregorial uh, yeah, brotherhood. And it's very much this sensation also that the person is a brother or sister to you and that sharing with them is an act of, of brotherhood. An act not so much of charity uh, but really um, cooperation, empowerment, and giving the other person the power to do and achieve the same goal as you want to have achieved. So helping another member in the aggregate often feels as if you're really achieving your own goals yourself. It tends to give a great satisfaction to be able to help somebody else from the same aggregate. A real yeah, feeling of spiritual fulfillment if you're uh, yeah, working with other people in the same agricore. So next I will be talking a little bit about um, our spirits. Our spirits tend to move from one incarnation to the other and they can also take their inher inheritance and entanglements with them. And I will talk a little bit on how that will impact our lives.